Come along with me, Aisha, A.K. Lash of Living Lash, as I wander the world with my girls, my husband and son, and sometimes with myself. And this time, let's experience Kaish Kaish Portugal. After an early morning pickup, a 20 minute ride, and a little pit stop to see where James Bond was inspired, we ended up in Kaish Kaish Portugal. Our first stop in Caixa Caixa was to the Museo Condos de Castro Guimaraes. It's an enchanting castle turned museum, and it's a very hidden gem of the area. People love coming here, and once you walk through the castle museum, it's filled with a vast collection of artwork, furniture, historical artifacts, so it takes you back in time. We had a great time just walking around. There wasn't a lot of clips we can take on, so we just kind of went back outside and our next stop was to the Casa de Santa Maria and then all the way to the Santa Marta Lighthouse Museum. We didn't go into the Casa uh, Museo de Santa Maria and we actually didn't go into the lighthouse itself. We went actually to a little coffee shop right next to the lighthouse, which also doubles as a studio for the radio. So we were able to listen to one of their live broadcasts while enjoying a little breakfast treat. After enjoying breakfast, it was time to explore more of Kaish Kaish, and we actually ended up exploring the Kaish Kaish Citadel. Once you walk through the opening gates, you find this amazing and impressive architecture, and there are several exhibits that are inside that you could actually look at the heritage and find everything, and there's an amazing view from up there that overlooks the ocean. After exploring through some of the museums and just taking in the history, we decided to head into Old Town for lunch. The streets are a maze of these narrow cobbled streets that have these cute shops, cafes, and restaurants. So for lunch, we headed to Cantina Clandestina, which was super cute and the food was so rich. I highly recommend going there. Um, the drinks were great, the food was great, and it was probably one of the best meals I had while in the area. After lunch and an espresso, it was time for an afternoon dessert. So we headed down the street only a little bit from the cafe and headed up in Santini's, which is a very highly recommended place to get gelato. You'll see it all over Portugal. We saw it in multiple cities. You actually can get two flavors. We enjoyed it so much. It was delicious and it was a great way to end lunch. While in Kaish Kaish, there's so many things to see. So if you're willing to walk around a little more, head down the road from the Old Town area and go see Boca del Inferno. So it's about midday through our first day in Kaish Kaish. Learn how to pronounce it. Anything with the S on the end of it is a SH sound, unless it has a vowel afterwards. So I've learned that. Um, but we spent the morning walking around central Kaish Kaish. Kaish. We visited a bunch of old houses, some castles, um, some very historical places. Then we went to have lunch, which is on the uh, yellow street. So it's like a street that's just basically a bunch of restaurants. Um, it's closed off to cars, and there are a bunch of good restaurants there. And then we went and got some ice cream, some delicious ice cream that shared some on the cone. I had um, two different flavors, Mira something, I forget, and cinnamon, which went very well together. Um, and now we are finishing up our town time in downtown Kaish Kaish. We're about to head to the hotel, uh, Penha Longa. So we're just waiting for the car to come get us, and then we're going to head off. On the next step, we're going to do a little tour of the hotel before settling in and going to a uh, dinner which is lab in the hotel. Um, I think it's pretty much a tasting menu that we will find out, but a note to the wise, Kaish Kaish is a place you can go day trip. While you actually stay here, it's a staying in Lisbon if you're looking for a more quieter area. Um, it's definitely a lot more quieter, a less busier, and there are amazing places out here. I highly recommend it, um, but stay tuned um, for some things going on and see what's going on the rest of the day. And of course, if it's your first time here and you're watching this, make sure you hit that subscribe button. You'll hear me say this before, but make sure you subscribe, keep following this video. And if you haven't seen about the days in Lisbon, go back a former video. You can see it in the description where you can see what, how we spent the first few days in Lisbon while in Portugal. And then we will be on to the next place in Porto. So there'll be one after this as well. 
After exploring Kaishkaish, we wrapped everything up, hopped in the car, and decided it was time to check into our hotel. And we were actually headed about 15 minutes away into the city of Central, where we were staying at Penhalonga Resort. Penhalonga Resort is a Ritz Carlton Resort, so expect luxury and elegance right upon check in. Penhalonga is surrounded by the beauty of the Central Mountains, and it's hard not to be memorized by the tranquility of the place. The resort's architecture seemingly blends with the natural surroundings, which is a great setting and a perfect tone for the adventure that we are putting ourselves on while we are in the Kaishkaish and Sintra area. We were fortunate to be staying in the Kaish Kaish suite, where there's only two actually available on property. It is a vast suite that has a lounge area next to the master bed. There's also a seating area. There is a patio. When we were checking in, we were greeted with a bottle of champagne, which we did pop eventually right upon we got settled. The bathroom was luxurious. There was a soaking tub, a double vanity, a rain shower, a water closet. So anything that we needed to to make ourselves comfortable in that room, that room included. The plush bed was probably one of my favorite highlights because if you know me, you know I love to sleep. And then of course, one of the major highlights is walking out onto the patio and checking out the amazing view of the Sintra Mountains. Penhalonga's history dates back to the 14th century when it was a serene monastery. So it is a very large property with a lot to offer. Today, parts of the original structure are preserved, giving the resort a unique character that blends with old world charm and modern luxury. But remember, this place is not only a historic site, it's a luxurious resort. So on the property, you'll find a number of restaurants, including a number of Michelin star restaurants, refreshing swimming pools, state-of-the-art spa facilities, there's champion golf courses, there is a fitness center where you can go and work out, including where you can go and have your own classes. There is a bar area where you can have a couple of drinks, relax, eat some bites. And in the bar, there is also this very cute little place where you can actually get these chocolates that are made right on property, different flavors, and even like little trinkets that you can take home and take back to the family so they can enjoy some chocolate as well. So as I had stated that this resort was actually originally a serene monastery and a lot of that architecture is kept. So you can go into the area, you can look at what the buildings still are, how it's being upkept, and you can actually go and just explore and fill everything in. At times when you're there, the area may be closed where you can't explore as much depending on if there's events. It's a highly popular place for people to have weddings. So just keep in mind that when you get there, Make sure to take advantage of the time to explore if you can, so that in case there is a wedding or an event coming, you're not kept out and you can actually go and just take in the uniqueness, the spirituality, and just the amazingness of the place. don't forget to explore the magical palace gardens with a rich variety of plants and fountains and winding paths it's really easy to get lost in the serene beauty of this place no path to get in here you gotta walk through things but there's a, a bench back there but there's no pathway <laughs> just gonna walk it and frolic <laughs> we make our own rules. Pretty much. <laughs> so we checked into Penhalonga, um, did a property tour, um, went and took some photos, and now we're about to head to dinner at Lab, which is a test kitchen. Um, only thing that we've been told from doing the tour is that 
the experience starts on one floor and ends on a second floor. So the restaurant itself, um, the dining is very exclusive. So for a lab, um, they say they have like 20 something seats. So it's very intimate, um, but it's a whole different experience. They give us a whole lot because they want to keep some things a secret. Um, but since checking in, um, as you know, you may have not known, but to know, Penalonga is a Ritz Carlton property um, that was recent um probably in the past couple of years but it's named after a rock that's actually on the property this property itself is 200 and something acres um it includes the hotel it includes a monastery it includes a golf course um apparently there's some private residence also on property there's a lot going on i'm um, very vast people have weddings here like it there's it's beautiful um but it's actually named after a rock that is on the property that is actually a long rock so penhalonga it means long rock and there's a little um across the top of it that the previous monks who lived in the monastery or you know say the monastery put out there um so we are now you know just getting used to it we popped some champagne they greeted us immaculately uh, i would highly recommend this if you're staying in the lisbon sintra cash cash area um it's a property that like no other and we are staying in the cash cash suite which is there's only two of those it's one of the newer suites that was built in the past couple of years but there's only two of the cash cash suites in the hotel um we're in the resort, so we're staying in one of them. It is immaculate. We feel like we're, we're taken care of, like we're living in luxury, which, you know, is how I like to travel. I'm sure you've experienced, but we're now about to get, like I said, head over to lab, have our first dinner on property. Um, and yeah, it's been great so far. We started the morning off touring Cash Cash, got here to the, the resort, and we're living our best lives. Whether you're staying on property or if you're just visiting the nearby area, you have to have a dinner at Lab. When dining at Lab, make sure you're prepared for an explosion of flavors. Lab offers an innovative tasting menu that surprises and delights with each course. The dishes are a true work of art. They combine the freshest local ingredients and cutting edge cooking techniques. We were surprised at every different course, starting with the first part of the experience where it actually took us through a tour of the different flavors around Portugal, which were interactive, it was immersive, and it was just all around amazing. One of the highlights of dining at Lab is actually experiencing this food combined with science. We got to watch in awe as these chefs uses these scientific principles to transform traditional dishes into culinary marvels. Each course that was presented is just an amazing culinary delight. It's carefully crafted to showcase the unique flavors and textures, and the wine pairings elevate the dining experience, so make sure you add that on. It complements the dishes in the most delightful way. And just remember that dining at Lab is more than just eating. It's a fully immersive experience between the presentation, what you're eating, and even just having the chef come out and personally present and explain some of the dishes, which added a perfect personal touch to the meal that we weren't getting at many other places and I haven't gotten at many times when I have traveled. <laughs> I can open it. All right. So it says, blessed with a vast coast, an outstanding ambition to discover new lands. Portugal became the propelling and pioneer country in the age of maritime discovery in 1415 through voyages and never before traveled oceans. As a result, the Portuguese brought back to the country new raw materials precious metals, ingredients, and spices that were then integrated into their culture. For your next moment, you'll be able to follow our traveling sardine and taste the most iconic and typical flavors 
that represent the most important Portuguese discoveries. Hmm. As you heard me just reading, there's a little note that comes out pre-dessert and then it's presented. And the dessert course is amazing. It excels in creating innovative and visually stunning sweet treats that are delicious as they are beautiful. So it is the morning of day two here while we are staying in Kaish Kaish, but we're technically staying in Sintra. So I uh, had a great dinner last night at Lab, which is right on property at Penhalonga. Um, it was a whole experience. So to give feedback about it, it's very immersive. Like you probably were seeing, it starts on the first floor, then you come down to the second floor. Um, and the flavors themselves were absolutely spectacular. So I highly recommend it. We also went with the wine pairing that went along with it. I'm one that always recommends when you do a tasting menu, if there is a cocktail or a wine pairing that goes along with it, just take part in it. Um, Obviously, it usually is an extra expense, but it's it's well worth it. Um, but we are up this morning. Um, we do have three nights here. So we will be here, we were there last night, we'll be here tonight, and then we have one more night after that before we leave the train to go to Porto, um, which will be the next video. But uh, this morning, we were actually heading into further into Sintra to look at the uh, past palaces, um, the castle we're going to, I guess, it's the Sintra National Park as well. I think that's the area. Also exploring downtown Sintra. Um, we're gonna actually see what we actually can go into. So due to the timing uh, where of us being in Sintra, uh, the palace workers are actually on strike. So they're on strike on 8th, 9th, and 10th. It is like forewarned, so planned. Um, but when you go and look at all the information, it just kind of does say it may be closed, it may not be closed. So we kind of have to go and figure out if it, you are someone who buys tickets in advance um, which is always highly recommended and something like this does happen um, typically they're very good at offering refunds or rescheduling um, so we're gonna just gonna go down there and see what we can actually go into what we're going to explore it is a little muggy out today um, granted we're also in the mountains so the mountains always are cloudy um, but it did start off raining today and the clouds kind of moved over it is getting a little brighter but it is still overcast um, but yeah, so day two, heading into Sintra, which as I said, Cash Cash, Sintra, they're very close together, as well as uh, being close to Lisbon, but Cash Cash and Sintra are basically, uh, Kaish Kaish uh, are basically kind of married together. Um, so we're gonna go off property today. Like I said, go see the palaces. I'm really hoping we can get into them. I was been really looking forward to seeing these palaces. Um, so let's go see what magic we can find among Sintra. Sintra is known for its palaces, including the Penha Palace and the Manzarat Palace, but unfortunately for us, the strike was in full effect, so only one was open. So we ventured out that morning and were able to explore the Quinta da Rigalira. The Quinta da Rigalira, which I am probably butchering, is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and it's a true architectural wonder. The palace is surrounded by lush gardens, mysterious grottos, and an intricate network of underground tunnels that makes it feel like you're stepping into a, a mystical realm. Then make sure to stop by the astonishing initiation well. It's a deep spiral well that was used for initiation rituals and its intricate designs leaves everyone who visits wondering about the mysteries it holds. As we wandered the palace grounds and the palace itself, the tour guide that we were with actually showed us the various symbolic elements and references to Greek and Roman mythology. It was really fascinating to see how these themes were woven into the architecture and the design of the overall estate.
Our journey through the Quinta de Regalera was nothing short of extraordinary. It was a hidden wonderland that truly left us in awe. After exploring the palace, we decided to venture to downtown Sintra, where time seemed to stand still. We wandered through the narrow cobbled streets where we were greeted by charming shops, selling unique souvenirs and local delicacies. And then right in the heart of downtown stands the majestic Sintra National Palace, which again, we couldn't go into, but instead we decided to venture to some of the cafes to try some of the famous pastis de Sintra. Since the palaces were closed, it was time to explore elsewhere. So we went to Cava da Roca, which is the westernmost point in Europe. Make sure to check this out for amazing views and try to come on a day when it's not as windy, but still fun no matter what. At the resort, Penhalonga, after spending the day touring around Sintra and went to a couple of other wonderful spots. So we are on our way actually to a cocktail class in one of the restaurants. Um, we're not quite sure whether it's just a private one for just us or if we're going to be with other people, we're going to find out. Um, but like I mentioned earlier, there is a strike going on in Sintra. Um, what we learned is that some of the castles or palaces, I just stop calling castles, palaces in Sintra are privately owned um, and the workers are striking because the palaces make millions of dollars from tourists and they are not getting paid fair wages. So they are on strike for pay, uh, pay uh, fair wages, uh, but we were able to go to one, the Palace de Palace Regalia Palace, um, information's about it but we were able to go there um, because that one's owned by the state so we were also actually told that the possibility is something like this might never happen again because um, the governor of Sintra of the area is getting annoyed with the strike because it's not the first time it's happened it's actually happened before where they are closed for two weeks and it loses a lot of money for the area um, so the there might be a possibility that by the time you're watching this video, if it's time from now, um, that the palaces may be owned by the government and not by the private owner. Um, but that's neither here nor there. We were able to go through one, had a great time, um, went to downtown, downtown mid Sintra area, which is kind of, um, there's not too much to do around there. Um, you could probably walk around in it if you're just planning on walking around in like 10 minutes. Um, it is a good shopping area where you can find like unique little trinkets. Um, and then we went and kind of went around Sintra, went to the westernmost part of Europe, not counting so just Europe, the Europe that's connected to Portugal. So just consider it that way. And then, um, which is windy by the way. So if you're planning on going, do not big bring a dress that could fly up like I did. Um, Cause it was, it was quite a journey. Um, and then we went and just kind of drove around cash cash again and then came back. So we're heading off. We're about to do a, like I said, the cocktail class, um, make some cocktails, maybe with some gin. We don't know. They said there's like a popular with gin on the property, but we're heading in. So we were graced with a very intimate experience at Penhalonga with a mixology class where we were actually shown how to make some of the basic cocktails and then also help to make some of our signature cocktails that we actually wanted to do. So it was super fun. We had a great time. We made a number of cocktails and learned a variety of different techniques that I brought home and I'll be using very shortly. So after our pre-dinner cocktails that we did split between the two of us, it was time for dinner at Midori, which was right at the Penhalonga Resort. It is a Michelin star restaurant, so the dinner was amazing. The area was great. The service was immaculate. And it was a great day to end our second full day in the Kaish Kaish Sintra area. It is our last full day here in the Kashkaish Sintra area. Um, today actually we have on the docket of a classic car tour, um, but we're gonna see how it goes because we're looking at the window right now and it is downpouring. 
um, the forecast yesterday said it was supposed to rain and it rained for a little while while we were sitting there eating dinner and then it got clear um, so maybe the same thing will happen. Additionally, they also shared that us with being in the mountains where the resort is, it's a microclimate area. So the climate and what's going on here may be different than where we're actually going. Um, so the classic car tour is taking us, uh, it's scheduled to take us to the westernmost point, which we actually went to yesterday. So we may try to switch things up. Um, if not, we'll see where it goes. And then we're also going to a traditional village. It's called, um, a Zejas do Mar at some point during the tour and then we'll come back and we'll do a bunch of other things throughout the day. Um, we've got a boat tour on the docket. We'll see how that goes. Again, it's raining so no one really wants to be on, a, on you know, a boat outside while it's downpouring. Um, so we're just gonna see how the day plays out. The forecast didn't say anything about rain so this could just be an isolated um, cloud that's just passing through. Uh, cross our fingers that that is the situation because um, we just want to have a beautiful day um, on our last day in the Kaish Kaish area um, before we hit the bus tomorrow to head to Porto. We're picked up right from the resort for our classic car tour and it was a great ride. It was very smooth and our tour guide was very gracious. They already had an itinerary planned out for us so it was just for us to hop in the car and get ready for the day's adventure. After riding around for a bit to see the various sites before we took some stops, the driver did allow me to hop in the front seat and try to drive this classic car. For someone who never drove manual, it was quite an experience. There were so many things to see on this classic car tour, and though we didn't stop at every place, if there were places that we wanted to stop, the tour guide was very gracious to let us stop and take photos and videos and kind of just see the area. But the one place he did take us to was a Zenhasto Mar, which is a traditional village that has an amazing view of the ocean, and it actually resembles a little bit of Santorini in Greece. If you really look at it closely and look at the elements of it, Mine is the blue rooftops. So it actually is turning out to be a pretty good day for our classic car tour. Uh, when we did get in the car and left, it was downpouring. Um, but once we got towards our first stop, the sun came out, like literally in minutes, we were down by the um, Western Point. It was foggy, you could barely see the lighthouse, and then within seconds, you could see the lighthouse. Um, so now we have been driving around, we've been looking at a few of the beaches in the area. Um, we are currently in one of the older villages, which is Azejas do Mar. Um, probably butchering it how they say it, because I think it's Azejas uh, Azehash Domar. It's it's because the way they pronounce things is a little different, but all the information is going to be a um, place where you can find it. I always put it here for you. Um, but we are in the little town. It is a beach town, so there's a beach down here. And this is actually a beach where Bono um, used to actually come and visit with this restaurant that's also right here. Um, so it's actually pretty well. We're actually walking around. We just took some photos. Uh, and we're heading back up to get back in the car to finish the tour um, before midday lunch and the rest of our experience. So once the tour was over, it was right back in the car in a short ride back to Penhalonga Resort where it was time for lunch. Right on property, we decided to go to another one of the resort's restaurants to have tapas for lunch, which were filling, but not too overwhelming because we still had dinner later that night. So we are back at the hotel, um, kind of hanging out. Well, actually, I'm back at the hotel, um, exploring some of the amenities. So probably gonna go hang out by the pool for a little bit after I kind of just take a small little cat nap, maybe for like an hour. Um, 
Jess decide to hang out and go back out to Cash Cash. Um, so since we are here with the tourism board, um, we do have a person that came and picked her up um, when I was supposed to go. So we do have transfers that have been helping us. But for those who don't have transfers and you know can't always get those, uh, some tips that I have here. They do have Uber and there is another app called Bolt. Um, Bolt is like Uber, it's kind of the same concept and depending on what area you're in, um, Bolt can be better. So for example, um, when we were in Lisbon, Uber was really great with us picking up from the airport. Um, in Lisbon, it was better for us to use Bolt when we were in downtown Lisbon. Um, and here for a couple of some of our adventures when we just want to move around in the area when we were exploring, um, we found that Bolt was better in terms of pricing as well as availability. So. It's good to have both just in case that you're in an area and you kind of just want to look up, have both apps open or both as available to see what the better price is um, and how many cars are available and how long you have to wait. So, you know, here on Penalonga, um, it is a hotel that is kind of like even like a long driveway when you're coming in um, and it's not like directly in a city center. Um, it's in Sintra. It's kind of about like, you know, like a five, six, seven minute drive from Cash Cash Town Center. Um, so there are people in the area but you might want to have both just in case that you know there's you know want to be somewhere fast just in case you know the, the wait is long but that's neither here nor there we had a transfer so just like I said is heading back to cash cash to do look at some more places there are um, other museums that they have so they have some art museums uh, as well as some other house museums and um, they can go look at there's also um, Call it, it's like something hell something but it's basically a, a view where it's uh, near a beach and there's rocks in the water um, but I decided I just want a little bit of downtime I'm someone who can't always just you know travel and do everything 24 7 um, so we had lunch here back at the hotel we ate at um, Alora it's it's all in the information I keep forgetting names here um, but kind of taking some time catching up on some emails and then um, in probably like a couple hours we'll be heading to dinner so we're heading to dinner um, at a nice restaurant it's also a hotel so I'm excited for that so but I'm going to probably take this bonnet off in a little bit so catch me it's bonnet time trying to get my hair up keep it nice um, gonna catch up on some emails take a little cat nap head down to the pool for a little bit um, read and just relax and by the time Jess will get back I'll be ready to go and then we'll be off on the next spot it's our last day here in the Centrish Centra Centra cash 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 area um, tomorrow we have an early transfer we're heading to Porto um, so you'll see for the rest of this I'll share about what happened like once we're leaving you can see some of the detail that we see on our way to dinner what's going on with our dinner then we'll end the night we'll be checking out of Penhalonga, which I'm so sad. I love this this resort. I like I said, I highly recommend it. I won't be checking out, heading off to our next adventure, and then you'll have to check in on the next video. Because if you haven't checked out for the first part of the Portugal trip, you need to go back to the other um, the other video, which is right there in the description um, for Lisbon, our days in Lisbon, um, and then you're here watching this one. And then our next part is to. Um, Porto, which will be a next video, but depending on when you're watching this, it may already be in the description right now because it's filmed, it's posted, and it's already there. So it's three parts in Portugal. Um, they'll be heading home, unfortunately. Um, but you know, we could extend the stay and go to other places in Europe because it's a lot easier to get around Europe once you're in Europe. But this girl's got to get back home and take care of the little guy and help out hubby with everything that's going on at home. So that's kind of it midday, and let's go heck, get take a little catnap and get ready for dinner soon. For our last night in the Caixcai Centra area, we went to the Fortaleza do Guincha restaurant. 
The building itself is a coastal fortress style architecture and it's a real sight to behold. And of course, while you're sitting there, there are amazing views of the Atlantic Ocean. You could watch the crashing waves and the golden sunset, which is a touch of magic that added to our dining experience to make it truly unforgettable. Then of course, there are wine pairings that go along with your food. But what I would recommend here whenever you're choosing your meal, is to go with the fresh lobster grilled octopus or something that's seafood because that's really what they're known for. Good morning. Um, wrapping up our time here in the Kashkash Center area. Uh, woke up this morning pretty early, uh, pretty much ready to check out. Going to Mish Penhalonga. Um, going to catch a bus from Centro to head to Porto. So for any of those who are in Portugal and you are looking to get around, there are plenty of options for transportation. Um, so this is basically it. This is the end of Cash Cash Centra. Uh, moving on to the next one. Again, if you have not seen our first adventure in Portugal for our first stop when we were in Lisbon, make sure to check out the link in the description and go back and watch that video. And then of course, stay tuned for the next upcoming video about our time in Porto. Um, like I said, depending on what time you're watching this, it may already be in the description, but make sure to follow along um, for our next little adventure. And for those who haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you can stay in tune with everything that's going on with Living Lesh, as well as other travel videos, um, travel vlogs, you know, real talk videos, uh, beauty hauls and reviews, fashion hauls and reviews, that all, all of that, all of that. It's early, so I'm losing it, but I will catch you next time.